Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM24 Youth Academy Challenge. It's been a while but we're back and it's Youth Intake Day. Let's go and have a look. Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the Save Fellow Managers. It's a joy to be back. I had a little uh, trip away for my birthday, a bit of a surprise. My brother-in-law and wife came over. We went to a place in Malaysia, played some golf, had some spa. Um, it was very, very nice indeed. But I did miss Football Manager and I did miss making videos and we're back. And it's Thursday, so you're going to get one today, one tomorrow, uh, and then hopefully back to normal next week. But let's have a look. But it is Youth Intake Day. We have announced the new intake of youth players that we haven't looked at yet. One bit of unread news obviously but let's have a quick look at the season if we go and have a look at the cup competitions or the competitions in general um in la liga then we are currently eighth we have a game in hand that game could put us back into a european spot if we win it we could go back into sixth which is reasonably good i feel like this whole save is sort of in that phase now of a youth academy where it's petering out and not much is happening, and we're getting sort of Europe, Europe football every year. We're, we're increasing our reputation slightly every year. And I feel like I've got a feeling we might get sacked in this save before we finish it. Because I think it's going to get to a point where we're not... the Because our reputation gets better and better and better. The board will think Champions League football is now what we should be doing every, every year. And then two years in a row, we probably won't get Champions League football and we'll get fired. Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll wrap it all up before then. But who knows? Uh, but it's been an okay season. 29 games played, 13 wins, 6 draws, 10 losses is far too many. Uh, a goal difference of plus 5 and 45 points to show for it. I mean, if you look at Atletico Madrid, who are top, looking to go back-to-back -back with the league wins. 29 played, 22 wins, 3 draws and 4 losses. But again, it's sort of like the top 3 and then everybody else. It doesn't... The, the top 3 are just uncatchable at the moment in La Liga. And I think we just need either a miraculous season... Or we have a couple of youth intakes where players are incredible, they mature and then they come into the team. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. In the Champions League, we got knocked out in the round of 16 by Bayern Munich. We got through against um, AS Monaco. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. And, of course, in the Copa del Rey, we didn't care. So we got knocked out in the first round by Getafe. The board have now started putting a bit of an objective on the Copa del Rey, so we might have to take that a little bit more seriously, but uh, not too fussed about that at the moment. But generally, it's okay. Um, not our best, not our worst sort of season, but... All, all in all, it's it's going okay. Can't really ask for too much more, to be honest. Um, in terms of the squad, only well one major one major out actually. Uh, Fintan straight. Brighton came in once of Champions League. Brighton came in and paid your release fee six point two five million pounds. So we are going to keep an eye on you for a little while and just see how you can get on but you can see sort of broke into our team had a loan spell out that got you some success we played you after that you were making a handful of appearances this year now joined brighton to see um what you can do there so i'm intrigued because i don't think you're at premier league level yet you might be but uh, at the moment definitely not but it did leave a bit of a hole at center back so we've had a bit of a, a jig around of the squad um andrew neeson leon hollick still in there javi coming in and in and out of right back because um kike andreas is injured at the moment but yeah we've we've we, you know we've got a few people knocking around uh, crimson maury is unhappy that we haven't developed players and the right of midfield when we don't use a right of midfield here. I set up a system that did use a right of midfield once, and uh, Crimson Moore went, oh, we haven't got enough players that play there. And I went, okay, well, we use youth players, and then we never use that system again. And, um, yeah, and now he's still pissed off that we're not using right midfielders. So we'll see what happens with that one. But overall, it's not going too bad. In terms of appearances, then 40 appearances for Andrew Neeson this year, 38 for El uh, for Tufe, 36 for Liam Hollick, 38 in total for Dave Supreme, 35 for Joe, 35 for Akinde, uh, 35 for Crimson Mori as well, I think. Oh no, 37 for Crimson Mori in total. 31 for Aaron Wall. But yeah, we are getting some appearances out of you lot. It's good. 21 goals for Tufe this year. He's become our main man up front. Miguel Moreno on the left wing has got 11. Crimson Mori in behind has got 11. Pedro Morea, our very good up-and-coming youngster, 
has got seven goals this season. Looking forward. I think next year will be his year to state his claim for a first-team spot. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, five for Rever, four for Pozzo, and then three and under for a number of people. In terms of assists, it is Kike Andreas and How, um, Joel Pozzo who are being the forces for assists. Seven for Wall, seven for Akinde as well. Six for Moreno, uh, five for Supreme, Holic and Javi, and then four and below for a few other people as well. And the best player of the season has been German Tina, who's only played three games, who doesn't really count. Miguel Moreno, unsurprisingly, is doing very well this year. German, or German Tina, has come up from our youth academy. Really good physicals, good mentals, and his technicals were improving before his injury. But um, yeah, he's just about breaking into the first team this season. Uh, two games already, two starts, one game last year. He seems to be doing okay. But uh, yeah, looking at the schedule, the results are just a bit patchy. It's all a bit all over the place, really. Not too much to sort of go through. I think the last episode was actually this 2-2 draw with Villarreal back here. So you can see we've been pretty consistent with systems, just mixing it up for one game or starting one game with 4-2-3-1 without DMs. But um, yeah, we lost to Monaco in the first leg 1-0. Very unlucky. jean Macquel and Mola got them the goal. We actually played relatively well. And that was proven successful in the second leg where we beat them 4-0. Ram Revert got a hat-trick. Anthony Akinde uh, completed it. He's got a goal in the 67th minute. We drew against Bayern Munich. We drew 1-1 at home. A really good result. Kazushi with the goal. But um, we couldn't just get that one over the line. Dave Supreme having a superb game. In holding midfield and uh, and then we went to germany and lost 3-1 andrew neeson scoring two own goals i mean they were three and up inside 13 minutes 91st minute we got an equalizer pretty pretty bad we beat almeria lost to Osa. i mean these are the things that hurt us right we've lost to valid the lid osasuna real betis um who else have we lost to I mean, barcelona is understandable alaves we shouldn't be losing to them really we lost to getafe in the copa del rey sevilla beat us four nil again so it's all been a bit hit or miss. Yeah. We're still losing to the teams we should lose to, and then we're sprinkling it in with losses to teams we shouldn't really lose against at all. Almeria, uh, Getafe, Alaves. Yeah. It's, it, it, Valad Valadolid and Osasuna are teams we really should not be losing to, but we still are. We still are. But we have got a little bit of a run in, only got Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid that, and, and Sevilla that will really worry us, but everyone else is definitely beatable in that run in. So hopefully. It goes relatively well, but we're here for Youth Intake Day. What a day to come back to as well. And here we go. This is our Youth Intake, and it's already better than last year. Our annual Youth Candidate Intake arrived for assessment. Uh, they're, left, left, they're led by the very gifted John Parsons, who's an Englishman. That's good. Uh, they have a chance to enter in a real golden generation. So we have three elite talents with John Parsons, the Englishman. We have one, two, three, four, five um, top talents with a Frenchman and an Englishman in there as well. Good talents, one, two, three, four, five, six with a Brazilian as well, and uh, two decent talents with another Englishman. So, lots of Jesse Lingard, obviously, bringing in the Englishman, which I'm not too much against. Right, Charlton coming on midfield right. No pace, no acceleration, a bit of jumping reach, fitness and aggression, unambitious. Yeah, no, move on, move on. Don't think you're looking very good at all. Mario, attacking midfield centre. Um, natural fitness, acceleration, aggression, flair, determination, first touch, and technique. Not bad. Unambitious, again. Um, and lots of negatives up there. No, move on. Move on. We'll just go straight into the good talents. And starting with our Brazilian, Rubens Westin. I think the first Brazilian we've got through in this save. One star current ability, two and a half star potential, central midfield, or attacking midfield. Um, easily discouraged is his personality. I've never seen that before. But uh, technique 11, tackling 10, marking 9, free kick taking 10, bravery 13, aggression 15, teamwork 16, work rate 16. That's all very good. Determination 1. I mean, I think I should stop paying attention there. Stamina 13, fitness 13, jumping reach 11. Honestly, I've. Wow. Determination 1. 1. Uh, easily discouraged and can lose focus. Lacks uh, a lot of determination. Not the right level. Inconsistent. Has some technical limitations to overcome, but is a good team player, works well within a team, lots of room to grow, and a bit versatile. Unfortunately, I don't think Rubens is going to make out. Whatever happens, we've basically got to sign all of these players as youngsters because 
um, our, U, our under-19s is running low on players, so we just have to bring them in. Samuel Alvarez, midfield, left, Spanish, one-star current ability. Um, stamina, pace, fitness, 12. Acceleration, 13. Agility, 10. Aggression, 13. Determination, 13. Flair, 12. Technique, 13. Crossing, 10. Not dreadful. Unambitious, again. Um, he lacks strength and needs to get down the gym. A bad personality. Inconsistent. Not at the right level. And uh, lacks game intelligence. Lots of room to grow. Fair amount of pace. Uh, technical ability is good. Versatile as well. So, yeah, unambitious, but... It's not dreadful for an under-19. Not dreadful for an under-19-year-old at all. David, a left-back. One-star currently, three-star potential. David is a 15-year-old resilient young fullback, which is much, much better. Stamina, 10. Fitness, 11. Balance, 13. Aggression, 16. Bravery, 18. Decisions, 12. Determination, 15. Teamwork, 14. Technique, 13. They're all very, very good. But as a left back, crossing seven, dribbling six, acceleration nine, pace nine. Uh, he's, okay, there's something to work with. There's something to work with. He cannot jump. Um, he has jumping reach three. So, yep. Weakest area of the game is aerial presence. Not the right level. Fairly inconsistent and not very versatile. But he's brave, um, a resilient personality, lots of room to grow. And a committed player who gives all his cause. Uh, yeah, best we've seen so far. David at left back, my namesake. Lovely, lovely stuff. Juan Ho Martin. Juan Ho Martin. Midfield left, can play attacking midfield centre. One star currently, two and a half star potential. Juan Ho Martin. Doesn't look too bad. A fairly determined young attacking midfielder. That's good. Maybe the reincarnation of Jesse Lingard. Technique 13, flair 13, leadership 13, determination 15, work rate 11. Acceleration 12, agility 14, pace 14, fitness 10, balance 10. There's there's something there to work with, something there. Needs to get down the gym and do some strength work. Uh, currently lacks game intelligence, a competitive streak and a bit inconsistent. But lots of room to grow, good personality, uh, a fair amount of pace. He's agile and can get out of the tight situations, versatile uh, and no need to... Well, he's got a second nationality or exempt from domestic registration, whatever it is. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, Juan Ho Martin. Um, I do feel like we need to keep positive with these. These are going to be the next generation. Um, we haven't got much coming through, so these guys need to be good. Angel Manuel Navarro, midfield left, can play striker and left wing. Uh, one star currently to two and a half star potential. An unambitious, enthusiastic winger, lovely. Uh, stamina 10, fitness 15, balance 13, decisions 12, determination 15, flair 11, teamwork 18, work rate 15, technique 12, finishing 11, wow, that's pretty good. Crossing 9, not bad. Pace 8, acceleration 9, agility 9. Uh, what else are we looking at? Anticipation 5, off the ball 5. Yeah, not too bad. Compet very competitive streak, can bend the rules. Unambitious. Not the best at anticipating things. A little bit injury prone. One footed, uh, of which is left foot, and lacks game intelligence. But he works well within a team. A very, very consistent performer. A uh, lot of room to improve. Committed player that gives all his cause and a little bit versatile. It's not dreadful. It's not dreadful. It's not dreadful. Uh, in the final one of the good talents, a goalkeeper, Victor Dominguez. Half a star. Probably going to be rubbish. We've actually got good go go goalkeepers is the only place we're pretty much stacked in uh, and don't need to worry about but a balanced young goalkeeper 16 years old aerial reach handling and punching tendency is all 11 or above leadership 13 positioning 12 jumping reach 14 fitness 14 six foot four to be honest he's not a bad start as a goalkeeper but uh, inconsistent and has a competitive streak we also have a lot of improve ability to improve balanced personality Inclination to punch the ball clear rather than attempting to a catch is a positive, apparently. But yeah, not too fussed about the goalkeeper. Into the top talents. Here we go. This is where it gets interesting normally. First up, Christian Doblas. One star currently, four star potential midfield centre. He is a professional promising attacking midfielder. That is a very good description. I love that. First touch, 14. Passing, 11. Technique, 14. Work rate, 11. Teamwork, 16. Flair, 12. Determination, 14. Decisions, 10. Balance, 15. Fitness, 15. I think he looks pretty useful as a young player, to be honest. Um, I'm quite happy that. Good professional individual personality. Uh, works well within a team. Lots of room to grow. Consistent. 
committed player that gives all his cause and versatile. Needs to work on his crossing, but not too fussed about that from central midfield. And technical limitations. To be honest, that's not that bad in terms of cons. His passing is good, his vision is okay, his teamwork is good, positioning needs to be better. Technique of 14, I'd say he doesn't got that much technical limitations that he needs to get over. Interesting. Interesting. Generally, technically, he's pretty crap, but he's got the right attributes sort of in the right places. So, yeah, interesting. Five for eight. No, a little bit small side, but not too worried about that. Uh, Leighton Mullins, defender right. We have one star current ability, three and a half star potential. Leighton Mullins is, mm, yeah, he doesn't look great, but he's a resolute young fullback, which is very, very good. Uh, he lacks some strength, he's not consistent, he's not versatile, and he lacks strength and fitness, that's fine. But he has a good personality, he works, he's brave, sorry, he's brave. Lots of room to grow, and a committed player who could give all of his cause. Now, interestingly, could, potential ability is could improve a lot in the future, so... We're going to try and keep an eye on coach and scout reports and things like that of our own players to say what their potential is, because I think that is a bit more accurate in terms of the league they could play in. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But in terms of uh, attributes, acceleration 8, pace 9, stamina 9, not great. Jumping reach 13, so he's 6 foot 1, not too bad. Uh, bravery 15, decisions 14, determination 16, teamwork 14, positioning 10. Technique 9, tackling 9, passing 7, marking 8, first touch 7, crossing 10. Not too bad. Right-footed as well. I'm not too sure why it's saying inverted wing back is his best position. He's right-footed. And he looks like he'll do better going up the wing. But, uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad for the resolute young fullback Leighton Mullins. That isn't too bad um, at all. Where are we next? Julian or Julian Campos. Hold him in field or centre-back. One-star currency, four-star potential. From Spain... Okay, a fairly loyal centre back. That's not a bad thing. Uh, centre back or holding midfield. Stamina twelve. Six foot seven. He, that's awesome. Stamina twelve. Fitness fifteen. Jumping reach fifteen. Anticipation twelve. Decisions thirteen. Teamwork eleven. Tackling fifteen. Marking nine. Oh, it's a good base. It's a pretty decent base to be honest. Lacks strength as they all do when they come through. Inconsistent. A bit injury prone. And is a fairly selfish player. But it's very good timing in the tackle. We're tackling 15. Lots of room to grow. Loyal personality. Good in the air. Versatile and is exempt from registration. So, yeah, not that's pretty good, Julian Campos. Pretty good for Julian Campos. Right, next up, the Frenchman, Eric Michel. Centre-back. One-star currency, three-and-a-half-star potential. Okay, six-foot-one. Not bad. Centre-back. Uh, fairly professional young centre-back. Crossing 13. He's definitely going to be a left-back, isn't he? Heading 7. Marking 9. Tackling 11. Bravery 16. Aggression 12. Jumping reach 12. Fitness 13. Okay, maybe he's not a left-back. Acceleration 8. Pace 8. Dribbling 4. Yeah, he's probably more of a centre-back. But lacking, really, really lacking mentally. Determination 10. Bravery 16. And aggression 12 are his only good attributes in there, really. So that is a concern. That is a concern. But looking at the um, coach summary, lack of a team ethic can place an extra burden on his teammates, a competitive streak, uh, lack of consistency, and a fairly slow player. But he's brave, lots of room to grow, uh, good, good professional manner, good in the air, versatile, and his, yeah, he just could improve a lot in the future. So not too bad, not too bad. I do like the fact we're getting a few different nationalities coming in as well. Francisco Malachon, centre-back. One-star currency, four-star potential. Francisco Malachon is here. Two-footed, which is good as well. First thing that caught my eye, but a low determination, promising centre-back. Free kick taking 11, tackling 15, technique 12, aggression 11, bravery 14, teamwork 14, positioning 9, decisions 10, Composure 8, Concentration 9, Jumping Reach 12, Stamina 11, and he is 6 foot 1. Not too many negatives. Lack of determination, um, a bad personality because of low determination, and is a fairly slow player, but great in the tackle, lots of room to grow, consistent, committed player, versatile, and uh, yeah, can improve a lot in the future. Interesting. Now, what is good is obviously all these people we're going to be bringing through this year will be getting game time in the under 19s because it's such a thin squad. So it'll be interesting to see how they develop. Next up, into the elite 
talents. We'll leave John Parsons till last. But Nicholas, one star current with five star potential. Nicholas looks pretty decent other than his physical attributes. Um, he is a driven, promising attacking midfielder who can cross. He's got can cross first touch, free kick taking, heading, passing and technique. Vision off the ball, flair, determ determination, 18, bloody hell. Decisions, 11, uh, composure, 11, aggression, 15, and balance, 12. Everything else is sort of like around 9, 9 or below. But uh, yeah, looks pretty decent, to be honest. He does look very, very good. Lacks strength, as, as all of our youngsters do. Um, looking to add consistency to his game. A little bit of a competitive streak and needs to get down the gym. But driven in pursuit of his goals... His technical ability is a hallmark of his game. That's very good. Lots of room to grow. Balanced ability on the ball makes him a fairly skillful player. Versatile. I do like the look of him. I do, And two-footed as well. Strong left foot, very strong right foot. Plays one-twos, which is good for his passing, his technique, and his vision. Okay, yeah. Nicholas, uh, yeah, I'm impressed. I am impressed. I like that. Uh, midfield center, attacking field center, or midfield left from Spain. One and a half star current with five star potential. Fernando Puga is here. And he is a driven, promising midfielder. So we're getting some good personalities from Jesse Lingard in this one. Uh, dribbling 11, first touch 11, passing 9, technique 14, anticipation 7, composure 7, decisions 13, determination 19, flair 14, off the ball 14, teamwork 15, vision 13. I really like those mentals that we've just talked about. Physicals, uh, natural fitness 12, stamina 11. Central midfield probably could do with a bit of agility. He's got nine. Balance at six could be better and definitely needs to be stronger. But yeah, can grow. Passing not the best at nine, but lots of room to grow because he's got the technique, vision and teamwork and off the ball. So I'd argue definitely more of an attacking player with off the ball 14. And if off the ball is high and positioning is low... They're generally more attacking, so which is which is fine. Uh, negative in the cons, we've got tendency to not get stuck in, can put his teammates under pressure. Um, must do a better job when it comes to marking, but we're going to try and play him attacking anyway when he comes through. Uh, better consistency is needed and has a competitive streak um, as well. But in the positives, a good personality. He works well within a team. Lots of room to grow. Uh, he's got balance and ability, and he's versatile. So, yeah. 15 years old, driven, promising midfielder. Puga looks relatively good. He really does. Right, the final one, the very gifted attacking midfield left or striker, John Parsons, one and a half star current ability, five star potential from England, bought through with Jesse Lingard. Oh my word. Oh, there's some really good stuff and there's some really not good stuff in here as well. Balanced, balanced personality as a winger, not bad. 16 years old already, um, coming from England. But yeah, physically looks really good. Acceleration 12, agility 9, balance 12, jumping reach 14, fitness 15, pace 12, stamina 12, strength 11, bravery 18, flair 12, teamwork 11, vision 12, work rate 10, off the ball 9. Everything in there looks good. He's just not a leadership and doesn't have good position, but I'm not too fussed about either of those. Crossing 12, dribbling 13, free kick taking 12, passing 10, technique 13. That all looks pretty good as well. Reasonable left foot, very strong right foot, so he'll fit what we want to do. He tries tricks. Um, he tries tricks. He's got flair 12. That's not too bad. But the negatives, he is inconsistent and he's injury prone, which is a little bit annoying. Lacks game intelligence. Can't head the ball. That's not too much of a problem. Competitive streak is in there as well. Now, luckily, none of them are bright red. They're orange, so it's not too bad. But he does have more negatives than positives, which is a bit of a concern. But... He's brave, he's got lots of room to grow, balance the normal personality, and a committed player that gives his all to the cause and versatile. He is good. He is looking very good. Those physicals are very good at young. He's six foot three as well, so can get on sort of back post crosses if we do improve his heading, which is eight. But six foot three, good jumping reach, good fitness, good pace, all of that good stuff. That is looking good i do like the look of john parsons let me know down below who is your favorite player from that intake i'm intrigued to know what you think they are all going to get a contract no matter of their level because our under 19s is this and that's it and i've just loaned out their only goalkeeper because he's going to move to real oviedo in at, like adult football and play for their first team as the first choice goalkeeper and you can see they're all above 19 now so we actually have nobody who is legitimately 
able to play in the 19s in the under 19s our squads are looking very thin they are looking very thin on the ground don't let this fool you either I've got the under 19s listed in here as well so everything is looking pretty thin on the ground but let me know who your favorite is down below I hope you didn't miss me too much. Let me know below that as well. Did you miss the save? Did you miss the save? Let me know. But uh, yeah, we'll be back for the end of the season. We've only got a little bit of a league running to go. Are we going to sneak back into Europe? I don't know. Maybe one season without Europe would be pretty good for us. But that was the youth intake for 2041. We are deep into this save now. and We'll be back for the end of season 16, I think this is. We'll be back for then. Catch you soon. Cheers.